Our last live broadcast from the stadium once graced by Stanley Matthews, George Eastham and Alan Hudson. What a team that was. <laughs> the Victoria Ground, Stoke-on-Trent, soon to be upstaged by a brand new arena. OK, let's get straight up to the commentary box, shall we, where Peter Brackley and Ron Atkinson are waiting for us. Yes, good afternoon, everyone. And while the news of Lou Macari's decision to leave is understandably dominating the pre-match debate, there's no doubting the significance of today's Potteries derby then for the team so desperately hoping to spoil Macari's day. Three matches to go, Port Vale, so often the poor relations in the past are closer now to top-flight football than at any stage in their history. The news that Port Vale didn't want to hear, of course, is that Mike Sherwood is fit to return to a Stoke side that frankly have lost their way in recent weeks. He takes his place up front alongside the manager's son, Mike, while in central defence, the Icelandic international, Lara Sigurdsson, is back after a one-match ban, and Ali Pickering reverts to right back. Sheeran's prolific scoring rate earlier in the season hasn't been maintained, just won the past three months. There he is alongside Makari back in the team today. And certainly Sheeran's presence will ease the burden on Makari Jr., who has had to carry the main threat on his own during Sheeran's absence. Four straight wins behind them, Port Vale are in cracking form, with their prospects today then enhanced by the recovery from injury of their influential winger John McCarthy. John Rudge has opted for an attacking 4-4-2 formation, with places for both Tony Naylor and Lee Mills up front. That means there's no room for Stuart Talbot in midfield. Dutchman Roger Cordes plays wide left rather than Wayne Gordon. The recent form of Lee Mills has been a real bonus for Rudge. His run of eight goals in seven games more or less defied the manager to leave him out. But pride will be Stoke Spur, of course, this afternoon. Denting Wells' promotion push and ending the last derby match here on a winning note will be a major source of inspiration for the home team. And it's all set up for Atkinson for a pulsating afternoon, I would think. Yeah, very much so. All right, Stoke have slipped out of the position where they thought they were going to get uh, promotion. But the last thing they want is their near neighbours, Port Vale, to go off. I think they will give every ounce to make that virtually impossible for Vale. Vale, on the other hand, play good football. All credit to John Rudge, he's done a marvellous job in getting his team into this position. The gamble perhaps to play two up, does that surprise you, playing uh, Mills and Naylor up there? No, not really, because he's got a very, very workmanlike uh, midfield. The four of them know what they're doing, they're very well balanced there. There's Andy Hill, and it's still rather untidy. Pretty scrappy so far. Neither side really settling into any kind of rhythm. Forsyth to Bakari, who held it up neatly. Sheeran lurking in the centre. The header was from Beeston. But popped out of the air without too much of a problem by Paul Musselwhite. It's a very lofty ball. It looks very much as if the defender might have been on his back there a little bit. As we approach the halfway stage now in the first half, Sigurdsson popping it forward towards Sheeran and Makari then for Scythe! Best chance yet, that wasn't it? Well, he'll good. feel he might have done better there. Yeah, good setting up play by Shearer, and Shearer backed into the defence excellently and held the ball off. Just dropped the ball down to uh, Forsyth, and as you say, I think, basically, he should, really, he should have been looking for a goal there. And Griffin has made that left-back face his own. Here's McCarthy trying to stretch him now. The goal to get his cross hit, too! Cordes, who arrived on the near post, but safe handling by Muggleton. What a good cross, though, by McCarthy. Excellent wing play, that. Rather under pressure from Makari, who's kept going well. Sheeran's in the middle. And that was Aspen with a vital clearance. My word. Really important header away then by Aspen. But the danger hasn't passed. Aspen again. Performing heroics back there. That's a right old battle. <laughs> McCarthy whipping over the cross, it's just too long for Naylor. Beeston to Pickering. Now 
Sean McCurry, another that stood off him, here's Sheeran. They can't allow him to turn in the 18-yard box. Corner to Stoke. Aspen and Bubba really having their work cut out to contain Sheeran and McCurry. Beeston with the corner. Sigurdsson has gone up, and Whittle. Sigurdsson on the near post. Whittle further back, looking to attack. And the header was from Flip. Locked through by Hill. It could be handled then by Mills. Not given. That would have been a big incident, wouldn't it, if he got that one on target, Lee Mills? Hill's free kick. And the header from Cortez. Only cut to be saved by Muggleton. Flint. Easton again. Pickering looked to be caught then by Cortez. Little flare up between the two. It was certainly a late tackle, and now they're all getting involved. Referee Allison trying to calm it all down. But the flashpoint was a tackle by Cordes on Pickering. It was a foul. It was a foul that's likely to get him a booking anyway. Um, but Sean Flynn's overreacted whether that's the fact that he's been a teammate of Pickering's before. He needs a foul of his. I mean, it's a very, very late tackle. It's, it's not a good tackle at all. Potter. And he cleared as far as Beeston. Whittle is forward, and Wallace. That goes for Scythe and Shearer. But they can't make any headway. And then they have forced the corner. Everybody bar Naylor back defending now for Port Vale. Sigurdsson again on the near post. Whittle couldn't get his header in. Shearer did. Again, it's a routine save for Musselwhite. For Porter. Another altercation, this time it's Wallace and Porter. The two number eights. The temper's becoming a little yeah, frayed so now. Just, just thinking there, there's a chance of an overspill here a little bit. I mean, it, that's... Players are getting so close to each other and contesting each ball so much that it's only natural that uh, somebody's going to lose the rag in a minute. In his rage, Range Rover. Beeston to Sheeran. Still Sheeran, it took a deflection! And it's gone in! Stoke have the lead! Sheeran will claim it, a wicked deflection. Just before half-time, what a blow for Stoke to strike. Mike Sheeran has one goal in three months before today. Now he has really opened up the derby. Well, he's dropped off the defenders here. He's turned, he's gone between two or three challenges. Straightened himself up. Oh, and it's what a big deflection there. Muscle White, no chance. Well, there was nothing Paul Musselwhite could do. No, no, no. I mean, full marks there. I mean, that's just showing the end of the shot. And yeah, it's clever. But I mean, what you must say, I, Sheeran's entitled to claim it by the very fact that it was made. He made it himself, picked it up, and ran very, very positive at the defence. And what a good time to score! And what a shattering blow for Port Vale and their prospects of making the playoff places. They will troop in a goal down. Mike Sheeran. That's 23 for the season for him. Chances have been at a premium in truth throughout this fiercely contested first half. But now with Stoke in front, well, we're all set up for a cracking second half. Can Port Vale come back? So Stoke City taking the field now, edging in front of the 45th Pottery's Derby, but it's been very close. All that industry and passion, effort and desire so far. Port Vale with it all to do. In the second half, thanks to the goal from this man, Mike Sheeran. 
just before half time, the shot deflected it off Dean Glover. Cyril Atkinson alongside me here. How do you think Port Vale can step it up now in the second half? Well, they've certainly got to try and get more forward play going. I mean, the midfield players at the moment, have, both Bogey and Port, have sat, sat behind the ball, just sat comfortably. And I think they were looking to get into half time all square now. That shocked them, and they've got to come forward now. Has been in the wars himself. With some hefty tackles on him. Andrew Griffin. Being encouraged to get forward more by Lou Macari these days, and he's certainly doing that here. Still Griffin. Now faced by Hill. Macari did well to turn. And with his shot wide of goal. Yeah, but that's excellent play from the two youngsters. Isn't it? Brilliant positive run from young Andrew Griffin. He cuts inside, then cuts outside on the run through. And he drives in field and drives on the outside again of Andy Hill. Now, at this time, you don't think he's going to get it in. All he's done is just rolled it into the near post, knowing for what one of his mates is going to be there. And Makar is very, very unlucky. Good turn and a little hook to try and bend it in in the second round, the second post. Sheeran wants it played forward. Time has run well too. Tinker back there with him. It's a corner. The referee ruling that it came off Tinker. He didn't think so. Only Naylor left backfield. McCarthy is back defending. Mills. Sinister posing his threat just on the edge of the six yard box. Easton again taking the corner kick, Whittle. And McClary going in! Flipped onto the bar. I thought he got his fingertips to that. The referee says no goal kick. Brilliant attempt though, wasn't it? And the ball's hung in there. Whittle, I think it is, just keeps the ball in the engine zone. Just keeps it. And that's very agile, very acrobatic, and very unlucky. With the pace of the shot. Quick four muscle, I don't know. Just got his fingers to that. Shearer was in the centre, back for Scythe. Good strike, but not clean enough. He's got quite a reputation for scoring, but kind of range for Scythe. A terrific goal against Wolves here. Now, what can McCarthy do here? Griffin's block, McCarthy, good save! Did really well then, Muggleton. And then hoofed away by Pickering. Great reaction stop by Muggleton. I mean, this is this is excellent play from McCarthy. Drives it in, gets the block, smashes it then. I must admit, for all the world, I thought that was going to be a goal. And a marvellous block from the keeper. So here's an opportunity for Mark Sheeran. Hovering just behind Ray Wallace. It's by that five man ball. Shearer curling it. And only inches over the bar. Yes, hit it at a good pace, a good tempo. He's just a bit unfortunate, it's gone more or less straight. Keeper will say he had it covered all the way then. Yeah. Should be in the active area. <laughs> Makari. Taking on Glover, and he had the pace to get away from it too. Sheer in the middle! So close then to making contact. Terrific little run by Makari. And so relishing this first team opportunity at long last. Porter. Here's Glover with that ball clearance. for Mike Sheeran and surely now that has put the game beyond Port Vale Sheeran strikes in deadly fashion Glover's poor clearance releasing Mike Sheeran I mean the ricochet rebounds right into the run but that's a tremendous strike even to be fair I'd sooner give credit there on, on the strike. What a great strike. Punished in devastating fashion by Shearer. Sigurdsson and Whittle for Stoke. But the man of the match is Mike Shearer.
His two goals look like settling the match now and putting a serious dent in Port Vale's promotion hopes. Glover. Nearly caught out again by the determination of Beeston. And now Stoke will relish putting one over their old rivals. Bakari. Sheeran going in. Desperate clearance by Aspin. Sheeran just behind him then. Bogey to Hill. Hill setting off, but never looked like getting there before Griffin. And how the Hope fans are enjoying this. Their season has rather petered out. But this will make up for much of it. Mike Chirac has found his goal scoring touch again. And that really was a super strike. Now Talbot. Chirac. Kari with Aspin. They have to run it out. We've got three in the middle. Here's Corden. They're going for goal. Well, good stop by Cole Muggleton. Yeah, very, very unfortunate there, though, Port Vale. Some good play on from the left wing from young Wayne Corden. Cuts in field, puts the ball into the danger area, an ugly curling ball. Carl Muggleton could have parried it into the way of one of the runners, pushed it into the only safe place, but it gives him a corner. No Port Vale player in there to benefit. Here's the corner, taken by Bogey. Mills. Okari. Now Sheeran, good combination between the two. Ray Wallace steaming through the middle. Wallace! And he's spurned a golden opportunity to and put the seal on this match for Stoke. And that's a brilliant run through from Wallace after some great play between the two Stoke strikers. Some great interplay here between uh, Makari and Sharon. Good ball into his run, he's completely clear of the last man. Stubbs his toe a little bit of fancy as he's hit it. Late substitution by Stoke, Beeston going off. Doesn't seem to bite too much. On comes Neil McKenzie. Another real prospect for Stoke City. He's had a full fleeting appearances. And made a decent impact too. Not much chance for him to do so in this game. Corden trying to extend Pickering. It's a throw to Port Bell, but it's not going to be their day, surely. Macari. Glover, I don't think he's seen Sheeran. He nipped it so quickly. Well, that's a great ball. McKenzie. And no question, Mike Sheeran has made his mark in the second half, in particular. And Stoke City celebrate victory over their bitter close rivals. It's a real blow for Port Vale. And they are search for promotion, a place in the playoffs. Mike Sheeran has been their undoing today. The goal just before half-time that was cruelly deflected in, and then the second one, that was Glover trying to clear. It fell invitingly for Sheeran, and he made no mistake. And a wonderful, so sweet finish. So Stoke season will end on a high with this win. Of course, he had been doubtful for the game today. How relieved Stoke are that he did perform. And he's been the difference really between the two teams.